Hello again everyone, welcome back to our channel and for today's video, pag-uusapan natin ang mga management na pwede natin gawin if the patient already has your chronic kidney failure. In our previous video, I did this, I did discuss about the acute renal failure and of course your uh, chronic renal failure which is considered as irreversible, meaning the kidney is no longer functioning, hence its function will no longer be available for this, uh, I mean for the body to promote equilibrium. Now, uh, for today's video, we are going to discuss different um, management in order for the uh, body to still excrete those waste products by metabolism in order for the body to be uh, still under the state of equilibrium and uh, will not suffer from any side effects of these um, problems or conditions. Now, before we proceed to that, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and of course, leave a comment below and um, don't forget to share this video to your friends. As I've mentioned in the previous three video, okay, when the patient already has your chronic kidney failure, two things that you can, that you can only do is to prepare the patient for a pass, uh, for hemodialysis, I, for dialysis, either peritoneal or hemodialysis, and your renal transplant or kidney transplant. For this video, I'm going to discuss those three procedures that can be done or performed to our patient to stay alive. Uh, while the kidney is already dead, okay, or no longer working, or uh, in this case, or in the cases of uh, chronic kidney failure, the um, kidney is completely failed to perform its function. Now, let's start with the first uh, type of dialysis, which is your peritoneal dialysis. So, as we already know, dialysis is a way where uh, the, the blood will be cleansed out of the different waste products of metabolism that is supposed to be the function of the kidney. But since the kidney is no longer functioning, um, synthetic dialysis or dialysis are actually created or developed in order to perform the function of the kidney synthetically. So the first discussion about peri uh, dialysis is the peritoneal dialysis. This is the first type. And this is a condition wherein it makes use of dialyzing solution that will be introduced via catheter inserted in the peritoneal cavity. So alam natin ang peritoneal cavity as nandito sa ating abdominal area. So the spaces in between organs is what we call as your peritoneum. And a dialyzing solution will be introduced into that space Okay, through a catheter in order to promote now your dialysis function. Okay, peritoneal membrane is used as a dialyzing membrane to remove now toxic substance, metabolic waste, and excess fluid. So through the dialyzing solution into the peritoneal membrane, which will serve now as your um, dialyzing membrane or kung i-relate natin siya sa kidney para siya yung magsisilbing glomerulus. Okay, that will now um, make sure that uh, all the waste products will be screened out and excreted from the body. Okay, now patient can dialyze alone in any location and it can be used in patients who are hemodynamically unstable. So this is what we call as your peritoneal dialysis. Now, the nursing care, or basically, okay, um, a tube or a catheter will be inserted okay, into the peritoneal cavity and a dialyzing solution will be introduced there. And the dialyzing solution will now increase the osmolarity of that area, causing now osmotic pressure to occur and whatever waste products is inside the, bad, the patient's uh, body will now be then moved from the intravascular to this interstitial space, which is the peritoneum. But the thing is, since this is uh, just uh, just following the, uh, the 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 principle of osmotic pressure or oncotic pre uh, or osmosis, okay, not all waste products can be removed through peritoneal dialysis. Kaya in terms of effectivity, mas effective pa rin po yung second type of dialysis, which is your hemodialysis. Now, question now is. When the patient is still in peritoneal dialysis, what are the things that we can do? Okay, as nurses. So these are the nursing care to patient with <coughs> or undergoing peritoneal dialysis. Number one is you have to regulate <coughs> the fluid volume and the drainage. 
take note that we will be introducing solution, dialyzing solution into the peritoneal cavity, which will be then promoting the osmolarity and absorb whatever waste products is inside the body. And a drainage will be then um, open and excrete now this uh, dialyzing solutions that contains now the excreted products of metabolism from the human system. Okay, so it is your responsibility as a nurse to regulate this fluid or volume fluid volume. Next is promote comfort. Of course, this uh, this procedure from uh, will develop a lot of discomfort to the patient, and it's our responsibility to promote comfort to this type of patient, uh, so that they will be able to finish the entire process of your peritoneal dialysis. We also need to prevent complications such as hypotension. Okay, kasi nga, we will be removing excess fluids from the body. May tendency na maka, maka, maka pwede magkaroon ng fluid volume deficit. Leaks will also need to watch out and obstruction okay, into the drainage. Uh, I mean, into the tube that uh, facilitates now the drainage and even the introduction of the dialyzing solution. We also watch out for possible peritonitis, which is the inflammation of the peritoneum. And the peritoneum will be, uh, once inflamed, may lead into a condition known as your ascites. And when a patient already has ascites, you have to assess also for the presence of this one. If in any case, you have to assist also the surgeon to perform parasynthesis to remove excess fluids from the peritoneal cavity due to the presence of ascites that was developed after peritonitis. Drain exit site infection you have to watch out for that and monitor urine and glucose level also because not only uh, the waste products will be removed but also some of the uh, glucose that are present in our bloodstream and other parts of the body plus you have to monitor the urine output because this may indicate uh, the fluid volume deficit kapag nasobrahan naman po tayo or uh, nagkulang okay Nang na, 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 na too big or waste products from the body. Okay? Teach the client also um, of the analysis and care of the peritoneal catheter to prevent infection. So those are the nursing care management that we need to do whenever a patient is having your peritoneal dialysis. Now, peritoneal dialysis is not that expensive comparable to your hemodialysis. That is why the effectiveness of this procedure is not that good comparing now to your hemodialysis so let's talk about your hemodialysis in a while now let, let me just show you how this uh, peritoneal dialysis works so as you can see this is the bag containing the dialysis condition the dialysis solution and a catheter was actually inserted intra-abdominally into the patient's peritoneal cavity so it will enter that area and at the same time a drainage Tube is also present in order to facilitate draining of the solution as well that was introduced into the peritoneal cavity. Okay, so this is what it looks like in person, okay, it's actual patient, and this is what it looks like sa actual process. So a drain, okay, through the gravity will then enter the system, okay, and the waste products exchange. Okay, through the process of osmosis occurs, then it will facilitate now suctioning of the drainage from the peritoneal cavity into the discharge solution or discharge bottle solution. Okay, medyo matagal tong prosesong ito. And at the same time, sabi ko nga, hindi po siya ganun ka ganda ang resulta. No, nakakaalis, but it's not that, um, it's not that uh, good comparable now to your hemodialysis. Okay. And the next one is your hemodialysis. For hemodialysis, client is attached via surgical created AV fistula or graft. This is your atrioventricular fistula or graft where the tube, hemodialysis tubes will be inserted later on. I'm going to show you through picture. To a machine that pumps blood along a semi-permeable membrane, dialyzing solution is on the other side of the membrane and osmosis diffusion of waste toxins percentage fluid from the clients occur. So hemodialysis is gonna look like this. So this is the machine. So what, what happens is that, so 
this is the if you can see the cursor of my um on my screen right now so this is the uh, uh the artery and this is the ventricle so basically the oxygenated blood will be then sanctioned okay sanctioned from the artery into the yan arterial uh blood pressure uh, 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 into the tube going now to your machine okay so arterial pressure will be then monitored here and this part here will pumps blood so basically it's a rotating it's a rotating mechanism that tries to pump now the blood from this area going up then a heparin injection is a standby on this area this is to prevent clotting okay into the machine and it will now go into the dialyzer inflow monitor then will go straightly straight to the to the dialyzer and of course dialyzer should be a personalized okay hindi po pwedeng mag-share ng dialyzer sa ibang pasyente okay kasi dapat po personal yan kaya nililabelan po natin yan whenever we are assigned in a hemodialysis unit then after what after the blood will pass through in this dialysis dialyzing or the filter which will serve as your glomerulus in this machine it will go now push forward until it reaches now the air trap and air detector chamber before it will be um and whatever air is uh, present doon it will be pumped para maayos okay at hindi magkaroon ng plug because that will lead to air embolism and uh, the filtered blood will return back to the body for reoxygenation into the lungs na naman. Okay? Until such time that the entire process will be done and commonly, it will take about 4 hours for the entire process of hemodialysis. Okay? And after that uh, hemodialysis, you would, uh, you would actually see a uh, very big improvement agad doon sa itsura ng pasyente after the procedure. Okay? So this is an actual machine looks like. Okay? And an atrioventricular fistula is present there. And by the way, hindi lang po siya sa vein or atrioventricular veins sa ating brachial area pwedeng gawin. Pwede rin naman ang AV shunt, atrioventricular shunt, fistula, and also your subclavian catheterization. So subclavian catheterization, ito yung mga pasyente na kita nyo na parang may malaking tubo sa bandang leeg. Okay? So that is your hemodialysis access. Now, what are the nursing care management? If the patient is uh, under your hemodialysis. So, of course, you have to obtain consent. Explain the procedure to the patient, obtain baseline vital signs, intake and output, weight and blood exam. So the weight is very important before the hemodialysis starts because this will determine kung gaano din karami ang nawalang fluids sa katawan together with the waste products. Okay? Strict aseptic technique. Since we are dealing with blood that is in the system of the body and our body is considered sterile, that's why aseptic technique should be observed most of the time. Uh, all the time monitor and prevent complication such as your embolism okay and of course sepsis bleeding embolism disequilibrium syndrome and sepsis should we watch out arm precaution so do not do any procedure in the area where the av fistula or av shunt is located kaya madalas makikita natin sa ward ito yung mga hemodialysis po, pag yung hemodialysis, yung kanilang access is nasa kamay, madalas makikita natin yung save left arm or save right arm. Meaning, no procedures including blood pressure taking and blood extraction should be performed or done on the area kung nasaan yung AV fistula or shot. Okay? Maintain patency of dialysis, vascular access, and... Uh, Watch out for any vascular access complications such as poor blood flow, clotting, infection, pseudoaneurysm or aneurysm, ischemia of the hand, edema of the hand may, contrib may contribute to congestive heart failure also. And you also need to watch out for disequilibrium syndrome which is the common complication after hemodialysis or post-hemodialysis. Okay. Due to rapid removal of urea and nitrogen waste product from the brain causing now signs symptoms of increased ICP or may lead to cerebral edema. So headache, dizziness, nausea and vomiting, restlessness and disorientation plus paresthesia and hypertension should be watched out. Okay. 
to determine if there is presence of disequilibrium syndrome. And this is a life-threatening condition, so you really have to assess the patient properly post-hemodialysis. Now, hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis is a lifetime course of treatment for the patient with chronic renal failure. They cannot survive Okay, survive kung wala pong hemodialysis na maglilinis ng kanilang dugo because all these toxins and waste products would remain in the blood unless it will be removed through filtration in the kidney. But since the kidney is failed, kailangan talaga ng dialysis ng pasyente. Now, the only thing that would save the person's life is through getting a new kidney. That is through renal transplant. So, renal transplant is basically... The transplanting or uh, the transplanting of a new healthy kidney from a source or from a donor into the patient or to the recipient of the kidney donor. And speaking of organ donation, we have the legal basis for that, which is your Republic Act 7170, the Philippines Organ Donation Act of 1991. For those who have licensed driver, if you take a look at, at the back of your license, nakalagay doon, are you a donor or organ donor or not? Because um, expected kasi na ang mga driver are at least of um, incurring okay, to um, motor accidents okay, or car accidents. Therefore, a high tendency na baka mamatay sila during accidents. The reason that this uh, or Philippine Organ Donation Act was actually created so that one of the reasons is that kapag na-disgrasya sa kung saan mang lugar ang nagmamaneho at siya may driver's license, pwede i-check agad yung kanyang driver's license and we will be able to identify if he or she is an organ donor. Kasi kung oo, kailangan natin siyang itakbo immediately sa pinakamalapit na facility, preferably a tertiary hospital with the, wherein they would extract now the heart or whatever organs that can be donated and be transplanted to a patient that is needing the particular organ. Okay? So that is one way of them preserving now the organ. So under this legal basis, it also discussed there kung sino yung mga pwedeng mag-donate at dapat mag-donate. At ayun sa batas na ito, pinagbabawalan din po ang magbenta ng anumang organ. Okay? Para i-donate sa iba. Okay? So, where do organs come from? We have your living-related donors. So, for example, kapatid, tatay, nanay, or kamag-anak. Okay? Non-living naman po. Living, I, I mean, living-unrelated donors naman. For example, your emotion-related donors such as your husband or wife. And best friend. Kung may talaga matalik kang kaibigan that are willing to donate blood or I mean organ to you. Okay? Disease donors can also be a donor. Okay, due to acute head neurological trauma, okay, such as vehicular crash and gunshot, blood head injuries such as your cerebrovascular accidents, aneurysm such as your patient with cerebral hyenoxia, a patient who, uh, who have died from drowning, hanging, and primary, primary brain tumors. So these are the persons or deceased persons who have died from these different uh, causes who can donate now their uh, organs or their kidney for this uh, matter okay so renal transplant what are our um pre -ner pre op nursing care that we need to take uh, take into consideration number one there is that we have to reduce the anxiety through pre-op teaching and verbalization of the feelings so you have to talk to your patient identify what are their concerns and answer their queries as much as possible if you are allowed to do so and if you know the answers also, assess the client's support system who would be there once they wake up after the surgery and uh, take note or discuss also the use of immunosuppressant drugs after the surgery because this would be a lifetime medication for the patient in order to prevent transplant rejection, okay? Wherein our own system will try to kill now the transplanted organ. No blood transfusion for at least two weeks prior to kidney transplant. Okay, that's very important. And commercially prepared erythropoietin used as substitute for the management of anemia because as we have discussed in the previous video, our kidney produces now your erythropoietin which is a hormone that stimulates bone marrow for the production of blood products or blood components. Therefore, 
after, okay, after or before, I mean, after the surgery, okay, after the surgery, you would also advise, uh, you will be injecting now your uh, synthetic type of erythropoietin, which is known as your epoietin, okay, to be injected to this patient, okay. Post of nursing care, perform baseline assessment, frequent position change, coughing and deep breathing is appropriate in any surgery naman po yan. Use special infection control measures since there is a transfusion, there is a possible of transplant rejection, so you don't want the immune system to be uh, overly triggered because it will kill the um, recently transplanted kidney. And take note that ang goal natin dito is mapababa yung kanyang immune system so that our immune the immune system of the patient will not kill and be considered yung transplanted kidney as a new okay kidney. I mean new or a foreign body. Observe for signs of tissue rejections, okay? Such as um, uh, such as your hyper uh, such as the following depending now on the uh, on the time frame or when does the rejection occurs if it occurs during the uh first uh, within the uh, first 24 hours or within 24 hours after surgery or within hours after surgery which is known as your hyperacute transplant rejection which is related to antibody antigen reaction basically our own body is trying to kill now the micro, uh, the transplanted organ this is an example of your hypersensitivity reaction type 2 so, you have to watch out for no urine output, blue and flaccid kidney, and the management for this condition under the hyperacute is transplanted kidney must be removed immediately, and the patient will automatically resume hemodialysis. Acute rejection naman po siya kung nangyari yung rejection days to months after surgery. So, body mounts an immune system defense against donor kidney, and your rate output drops sharply, increase beyond and creatinine level, fever, graft tenderness, and swelling, the management is going to be increase the dosage of immunosuppressant drugs. At least ito, hindi mo siya tatanggalin agad. Unlike sa hyperacute rejection. So if it's a chronic rejection, months to years after surgery naman siya nag unclear ang kanyang cause, gradual decline in kidney function, basically no specific treatment for this, but in the uh, long run, masisira din yung kidney. Therefore, it has to be uh, kind di man ang but the patient might uh, might resume to hemodialysis again. Afterwards, if the patient kidneys, trans new transplanted kidneys will be then um, uh, rejected totally. Okay, after several months of years having the kidney. So those are the three transplant rejection, renal transplant rejection process. Again, hyperacute, you have to remove it immediately. Acute is you have to increase the dosage of immunosuppressant, which is the lifetime immunosuppressant drugs ng pasyente. And for the chronic, okay, is no specific treatment, but most probably, okay, patient will undergo again hemodialysis for if the, if the patient transplanted kidney is no longer working. Okay, so those are the management for your chronic kidney failure, your peritoneal dialysis, hemodialysis, and your renal transplant. So this is uh, necessary in order for the patient to stay alive and remove the toxins from the body caused by now your failed, uh, failed kidneys. Okay, that's no longer doing its function. If you, have, if you do have any questions, please comment it down in the comment section and see you on my next video. Bye for now.